speak the word of God into our lives that we can change and we can grow and we can blossom, bloom and flourish in your presence. And so now, Father, I thank you for all that you'll say and do today. I thank you, Father, for the results of your word being manifested in the lives of your people. We honor and we thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, won't we give God another big thank you this morning? Amen. We've been, we've been talking about who we are as a church, driven by our mission statement that we produce believers who excel in life. Say that with me. As a church, we produce believers who excel in life. And so we've been talking about what that looks like. What does it look like as a church to produce believers who excel in life? And um, so we went through some of the components of our vision statement, and then now we're dealing with our core values. Our core values is the driving force that helps bind us together. It helps you to know as a, as a member of the church, us to know as the church leaders, whether or not we are bound together. It helps us to understand that when I'm having a conversation with you, you having a conversation with someone else, whether or not we kind of uh, have been going to the same church for a while. Because some people can be in the church and not listen to anything that the preacher says. Some of us can hear it but have no doing power. And so it's one thing to have name on a roll, another thing to see the manifestation of what and who you connect it to. Being a member here at True Divine, you ought to see results. Not, it shouldn't be that, you know, I've been going to church, I've been going down there for 10 years, ain't nothing ever happened in my life. That, that, it should never happen. If you connect it to the local church and the local church has God in mind and God is the top priority, then results ought to be manifested in your life, amen? And so that's, a, that's our prerequisite. Our prerequisite is that you and I would get results from our time with God and our time of fellowship with each other and our connectivity uh, together. So we've been talking again about our core values. So we have seven of them here at True Divine. Uh, number one, time. Two, excellence. Three, customer service. Four, quality of life. Five is love. And then six is people. And seven is, uh, is team. And so we've talked about time, excellence, customer service, and quality of life. And then on last week, we started with uh, love. Well, over the next uh, three months, we're going to be talking about family. Everybody say family. Yeah, we're going to talk about family, whether it's being single, being married, having children, no children, whatever that dynamic looks like for you. We're going to be talking about relationships in, in, in that regard. And uh, so on last week, we started with having the God kind of love and then viewing human beings through the God kind of love. Say that one more time. Having, possessing the God kind of love and then viewing human beings through that God kind of love. That helps us now to uh, be able to go, go to work and, and uh, communicate with even those who are not um, great communicators. It helps us to uh, go into society and deal with people that may not even like you because of uh, the color of your skin. It helps you to uh, deal internally in your own home when uh, uh, there may be things that happened that uh, wasn't quite right. It helps you to deal with a human being. Deal with a human being. And if you, if you, if you don't like people, it's gonna, hard, gonna be hard to convey the God kind of love. So the first, first thing that you have to have is a heart for people, a heart for people. One of the things when you become born again, God equips you with capacity, anointing, grace, to be able to love people in spite of human behavior. And there are all kinds of human behavior out in the world, in the church, on your job, in your home, in your community. There's all kinds of human behavior, but because of how people behave, should never change how we love. I'm gonna say that on this side over here. Because of how people behave, should never change how we love. 
Us loving is, is more important than how people behave because people are going to behave all types of ways. New stuff out there, you're going to find some people trying to be brand new on the new stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, so but our responsibility, not theirs, not to try to correct people and put people into hell or put somebody in heaven or, 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 or degrade or belittle or be sarcastic toward people. Our responsibility is none of that. Our responsibility is to understand how much God loves the people of the globe and then find out what God's heart is for people and then become that. Amen? All right, so we, we talked about love, which is an intense feeling of deep affection. Uh, we told you that in Greek, which your Bible is written in two different languages, Old Testament is in Hebrew, New Testament is in Greek. And uh, so the Greek, there are four words in the Greek that mean love. Store A, store A means uh, 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 love or affection, especially for parents and children. That's within the confines of uh, parental uh, relationships. Philea. Uh, which means affection, regard, and a friendship. Eros, which means love, mostly of relational passion, meaning, you know, it's more than, you know, you and I are just friends, but we are, you know, headed toward marriage or we are married. I, I love you, that kind of, that kind of eros. And then agape is the God-given love. It's, it's the kind that will pay the ultimate price so that you can get off the hook. Let me say that again. It's the kind that will pay the ultimate price so that you can get off the hook. Not that you deserved it, but because I love you so much that I'll take your place. I'll take the judgment for you. That's agape love. All right, so we talked about agape on last week, so let's just kind of venture in to some arrows. Everybody say arrows. Now, what I'm going to talk about today in, in relationship to arrows is... Um, uh, two components what we learned last week number one uh, Matthew 22 35 through 40 is that we have to learn how to love God and then love our neighbor as we love ourselves love God love neighbor as self love God love neighbor as self love God love neighbor as self don't let yourself off the hook by qualifying who's your neighbor you know well you know if we went to high school together then we're neighbors no Love God, love neighbor as self. Love all people, that's what he means. And then the greatest element in life, remember this, is love. The Bible says that our faith, our faith, our ability to believe God, the engine that drives it is love. That faith works by love. So if a person says they have faith and they don't have the engine, all they have is a shell of a car. They just have a shell of a car. In order to have genuine faith, you have to have love to drive that faith. Amen? All right. So what is the goal? What is the goal here, Pastor? The goal here, turn to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23 through 25. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23 through 25. This is our goal. This is our goal. This is our goal over the next uh, uh, couple of months to end this year. This is our goal. And Adam said... This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she is taken out of man. Verse 24, therefore, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're working on the goal. Here's the goal. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Here is the goal. You ready for it? And they shall become one. They shall be one. They shall be one. They shall be one. That's the goal. Now listen to me very, very carefully. You will not attain to the goal until you first get last week's message. You have to get last week's message in order to take the first step. That I have to learn how to have agape love because it's required in becoming one. It's required in becoming one. It's required in becoming one. That I love God with everything that lies within me. I love my neighbor as I love myself. And then, watch this, I realize that love is the greatest element that a human could ever have. Now I'm ready for step number two. 
Until I get one, you're not ready for number two. One on the way to our goal is to become one flesh. Become one flesh. Well, Pastor, what if I never ever decide that I want to marry? Good, you're already one flesh. <laughs> you, you're already one flesh. You don't have to go through the equation of, of, of skipping earthly mathematics, which one plus one equals two, but God's mathematics, one plus one equals one. One plus one equals one in relationships. In relationships, one plus one equals one. The problem is that we don't have a problem with the one plus the one. We have a problem with the equation of or the equaling out to. What does it equal out to? One. Now, how do I get there? That's the difficulty. Because in life, we've been taught one plus one equals two. So now, how do I rearrange me now to see God's equation? that one plus one equals one. Now, that's going to require that I go to the manufacturer and figure it out from God and not from my uncle under the shade tree. The goal is, if you desire to be in any relationship, is to become one with the person you declare your love for. It's to become one. You have to become one. And there are things that God's placed in life as, as, as life lessons in the word to help us to get there, amen? All right, so uh, let's do this. Write this down, number one. Every relational love relationship, I don't know if that's a tongue twister or not, but every relational love, relational love relationship should have a caring component first. I'm gonna give you a lot of first today. Every relational love relationship, everybody understand, every relational love relationship should have a caring component first. When, when, when people, people come to counseling and, and they say, well, Pastor, uh, uh, we, we've got some issues uh, uh, up front. Okay, okay, so what are your issues? Number one, Pastor, we just don't know how to communicate. And what I always share with people that in order to properly communicate with the opposite sex, is that you have to, number one, care. If you don't care, you will say it anyway, you will, you, will, you will disregard their feelings, you'll try to make them become you, which is a bad thing, by the way. You'll, you'll, you'll try to make them uh, become somebody out of your neighborhood. Y'all quiet. She grew up in a whole nother state, and you try to make her be from South Alabama. Impossible, impossible. So the first thing is that you have to, you have, to have care as a part of, 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 of who you are and what you're trying to become as a, a one unit. You have to care, everybody say care. care. When I was in sports, when I was in sports, our coaches taught us to care about one another and listen to me carefully and to care about winning. Care about winning, care about winning. So one of our goals was that we, we had goals of becoming champions. So when we spoke, we spoke about winning every time. Sometimes when we're in relationships, we don't think of that. We don't think of, of winning every time. But when you, when you start talking about connecting up, hooking up, declaring your love for somebody, you need to, you need to be caring about the same things. If you don't care about the same things, you're going to have problems in communicating, all right? Now, what do we care about? What do we care about? We care about the needs of the other human being, all right? So let me give you the highest need for a man and the highest need for a woman. We'll start with the women first. So men, you ought to be jotting this down. The highest need for a woman is security. When she starts to fuss, when she starts to gripe, when she starts to complain, when she starts to squeal like a pig, she is squealing in the area of security. She's saying, secure me. When she tell you, you know, we, we don't ever go anywhere no more. And then your answer is, well, we went last week with, 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 the, with the kids. We went last week downtown and hung out with the kids. And she said, but we, uh, you don't ever do anything. And he said, well, we went with the kids 
Two weeks ago, we went to the movie, and she said, oh, we don't and what's she saying? I'm not talking about us and the children. I'm talking about secure me. You secure the children, but the whole time you sat there, all you talked to was you and them children talking, and you ain't said nothing to me yet. And she's, she's squilling out of an area of security, okay? Highest need, men, highest need is secure me, secure me, secure me, protect me, protect me from you, protect me from everybody in your family, protect me from the community, protect me from people at work, protect me. That is the highest need, protect me. She's screaming from that place. And then yet we'll say, well, you know, if you needed that, you need to call your mom and them to protect you. I ain't got it. And God is saying, but the reason why I put the two of you together is because I knew that in you was protection for her. And that you would care enough to protect her and secure her. You would care enough. And so ladies, write this down. It's the highest need for a man is honor. It comes out in the word respect. It's called honor. It comes out in the word respect. Most men don't know what we need emotionally. So we just find the word respect. You're going to respect me. And the, and the lady's like, oh, well, what does that mean? You know, uh, what did I do? And, and, you know, you give an example of uh, for men, for men, you know, most men, if they're hanging out with, their, with guys, their guy friends, and, uh, and, and, you know, a tough question comes up, and, and, and your husband or, 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 or your, 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 your male friend's trying to explain it, and then the woman jump in, she going to talk for him. When you get back in the car, it's going to be on. Because to him, to him, there was no honor in that. There was no respect in that. And for you, as a woman, you said, well, all I did was just, just, just help you. And he said, I don't need you to help me. Let, let me lead the way I want to lead. It was my conversation, so stay out of it. But most of us, as ladies, especially ladies today now, Ladies today got different juice than mama them. I mean, they, they were like, okay, all right, he look too slow right now. I'm going to take this over. And dude like screaming like, what are you doing? Let me just, can I just say for myself sometime? Does that make sense to you? So honor is high. Honor is high for guys. It's the number one need for a man. Number one need, if, you, if you're a woman in a room and you've heard this saying before, you know, you can't get a man nor keep one. Here's the reason why. It's probably because you disrespect him where honor is concerned. He will not stay. He will not stay. He will not stay. And you say, well, Pastor, I'm still married to him. No, but he's closed off on the inside. He ain't going to talk to you. He don't want to go nowhere with you. He don't do any of that. Because if, if you say, well, well you, know, you, know, he, he's, 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 you know, he's trying to talk and, 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 and then you're going to punk him out, he sees that as, as dishonor. And any time a man is honored, he will shut down. He will shut down and he will be closed off for years. And even if you divorce him, you're wondering why in the world did he go and marry somebody totally opposite of, than I am? Because the, the highest level is being met. When he talks and when he's involved, this, that, and the other, she doesn't dishonor him. You know, when she's around her folks, she don't talk him down. She don't do any of that. And the difference is, every man needs to be respected. Amen. Every man. Every man. So if you ever hear a man squilling, if you ever hear a man squilling, you know, it comes out from ladies, it comes out, you know, you, you ought to grow up. He's saying, no, I ain't growing up. I want you to respect me. And this is the goal. This is the goal that we're growing to. The goal, goal that we're growing to. And listen, relationships and families will not thrive where the two needs are not being met. If the two needs are not being met, they will not grow and they will not thrive. But Pastor, what are all the other needs? We're just working on the top. You work, if you work the top, all the other needs get met. Does that make sense to you? Okay? All right. Everybody got that jotted down? All right, let's go to work on it then. Let's go to work on it. All right, so let's go to uh, 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 caring. Okay, so we talk about caring. Okay, now listen to this little part I got for caring. It's to display kindness and concern for others, okay? All right, go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 36 through 41. Um, 
Yeah, let me do that. Caring. Caring. Caring is to display kindness and concern for others. Now remember, we're talking about our relationships with other human beings, namely those that we fall in love with. Okay? We're talking about people of the opposite sex. Now, you know, I don't have no Bible for the ones that same sex. I ain't got no Bible for that. All I got Bible for is the opposite. That's all I got Bible for now. I ain't got no Bible. Later on, I got an example that I'm going to show you. People start to try to twist stuff and all that, but all I got is Bible for a man and a woman. That's it. I ain't got no Bible for that other stuff now. I just ain't got no Bible for that, okay? All right. So <laughs> I know people make it up, but I, I just don't have no Bible for it, okay? All right. In, in uh, Mark chapter 4 and verse 36, it says that when they had sent away the multitude, talking about Jesus' disciples. Now remember, we're talking about caring. Everybody say caring. caring. When they had sent away the multitude. Now, a part of the responsibility of the disciples was to go before Christ and to prepare the city in which he would go into and administer. The other portion was once he finished ministering was they were to disperse the crowds while Jesus, you know, went and refreshed himself and prepared himself to go on the next journey. Okay, so that's what you see is talking about there. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. Now let me explain that. Usually, Jesus would not just go and get on the ship and, and, and go traveling. He would go to a, a, a secret place alone, go and refresh himself spiritually, mentally, psychologically, and physically, and then he would take that journey. But on this occasion, Jesus is taken immediately to the boat. Okay, and they said, there were also with them other little ships. Next verse. And there arose a great storm of wind. There arose a great storm of wind. Now, when, we, when the great storms of wind of life comes, you find out whether or not people really care. When storms of life come, that's when you find out whether or not people really care. When it gets tough, that's when you find out whether or not people really care. And usually this already happens when you're dating. You already find a little inklings of this, a little inklings of that on whether or not they really care. Listen to what he says. There were a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full, meaning they were about to sink. Go to the next verse. And when he was in the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, they, aw they awake him and said unto him, Master, notice the next word. What does it say? He said, he, they said, Master, do you even care that we are about to perish? And that's one of the fundamental questions you ought to ask if you're dating in this room. Get it done up front. That when, when I'm about to perish, will you care? If I'm going to declare my love to you, when, if I'm about to perish, if life is about to go under from me, will you even care? Now you need to call your folks them. I, I don't care nothing about that. And we just be, you know, just nasty to each other. When, when the assignment is we ought to come together and be one. If we're going to be one and we're going to reach the goal of one, then there has to be a caring component. We got to care. I got to care. Some of us care more about people on the job than we do our own spouses. What are you talking about, Rem? It's, it's 8.49 in the morning. What you saying? Here's how it comes out. Spend all the time on the phone with the people from the job. You never, you never clock out from your job because you're on the phone with them all the time. Nobody gets any attention, nobody gets any care because you care more about them than you do your own people that live with you. And we got trouble. We got trouble in this house. We got financial trouble in this house. We got health trouble in this house. We've got uh, 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 communication trouble in this house. And I'm asking you, do you even care that we haven't spoke to each other in the last three months? Do you even care? Man, that would trip me out. If my wife woke up the next day and wouldn't even talk to me, I'd be like, what in the world is going on? I'd have called me a psychiatrist. I'd have lost my mind. Why? Because there's a caring component. 
It's a genuine caring component that, that the two of us have to talk every day. There can't be no, no being upset and mad and angry. My wife would tell you, now the only time my wife and I have slept in the different places is when one of us had to be out of town. We've gotten mad late in the night. And she declared, no, you ain't sleeping in here. And I say, yes, I am. And I scooch under. Y'all know what scooch is, right? <laughs> Y'all know what scooch is, right? Y'all, Y'all still got a little country in you, right? You know what scooch is? <laughs> and then I scooch on and she be all oh, just mad. Get off of me. And she get up and get her pillow. And I said, where you going? I'm going up to the middle room. Y'all know what the middle room is. That's the one in between the other room. <laughs> I'm going up to the middle room. And then while she walking, I say, make sure you prepare my side. I'll be in there in a minute. <laughs> Let her go in there and cool off. There I come with my pillow. Because <laughs> I care. Because I care. Care enough to say that we're going to talk. We don't let nothing come in between us. Because if we're going to be on the same team, we got to be in the same rhythm. Do you even care? Do you even care? That's the question the disciples had for Jesus. Master, we are sinking while you're sleeping. And Jesus is having a good time sleep too now. I mean, think about it. It is lightning, it is thundering, it is raining hard, so hard that they're about to capsize. I mean, it is absolutely coming down, and Jesus is in the middle of a snore. I mean, turning over to the other side to snore. And that's where some people are. Trouble over here financially, and both of y'all get earned checks. That, that's the most amazing thing to me, is that your spouse can be broke and you got money in the bank. Do you even care that financially, I, I hit a demon right there. Do you even care that I have a, a, an account that is $1,500 in the red? And you over here sleep financially. <laughs> it ought to bother you. It ought to bother you to know that your wife don't even have enough money to put gas in the car. I am preaching good in here. And by the way, this ain't even in my notes, praise God. It ought to bother you. It ought to bother you that when, 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 your, when your husband says, you know, you know I, I need to go get a haircut, he can't even go get one. It ought to bother you. You ought to be able to, you ought to, be able to say to yourself, something is wrong with how I like humans. Something is wrong with how I love humans, and I've declared my love to this human. Jesus, do you even care that we're going down? Do you even care? And by the way, let's go back to the finances. You know, I'm not one of those believe that, you know, your money ought to be up here and hers over there. I don't believe that. I mean, I mean, I really believe 100%, no matter, 200%, what is it, 300%, 1,000% that when she go to work and she get a check, it's mine. And when I get my check, it's thine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Gotta care. Gotta care. My wife told me the other day, she said, you, you forgot to put gas in my car. And then I forgot the same night to put the gas in the car. So what I do, I woke up the next morning and I, I sent her a text. I said, hey, I forgot to put gas in the car like she... Didn't know it. I forgot to put gas in your car. Do I need to come over to the school and get the car and gas it up? She sent me back a little laughing face. And, no, I got it. But I had to care. I had to care. I had to care enough to even put the gas in the car. I had to care to even consider sending a text the next day and say, I forgot to do it. Some of us in this room don't even care if the spouse walk, run out of gas. It don't mind me. You can run out today if you want to run out. Do you care? Do you care? 
do you care? If you don't care, there has to be a change of heart. It's not that you become more stiff-necked. It's not that you become more callous in heart. This is the time when you get on the altar of God and you grab hold to the horns of the altar and you say, God, that's got to be something wrong with me to have been married to this person five years, 10 years, 15 years, and I don't care nothing about them. Something is wrong on the inside of me. Change my heart. Change my ways. Change my attitude. Do you care that, I, that we perish? Go to the next verse. Watch your response. Because this is what happens when, you know, you know, they, they, you know, they come into your space, you know, you're in the middle of Alabama Auburn football game and Alabama winning. And you just want to see them beat Auburn all the way in the ground. And your wife calls you from the back. Steve! It's real low. And then she let that squeal out like something wrong, you know. You know, stay like, oh my God, something wrong. How burn it down? Now you got to choose whether or not you're going to watch the game. <laughs> While the house burned down, are you going to go down there? So you ease up, right? You ease up. You back it out the door real slow to watch the game, hoping it's going to commercial, you know? But this is what Jesus does Jesus is resting. But the guys that he has on his team, got a problem. So what's more important, me resting or the problem they are experiencing? Let me say it again. What's more important? Me resting. I have a right to rest. I preached. I did all of the miracle signs and wonders and none of these 12 men did anything but sit around and record it. And now I'm 30 minutes into my nap. And they, they can't even fight the waves. They can't even handle us staying afloat. They coming to me. And Jesus is like, okay, let me get up. And this is what he says. He said, he arose, and he rebuked the wind, said to the sea, peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now watch this. Now, watch, I want you to get a hold of this because in any relationship, there ought to be strengths and weaknesses. Not one time could any of these disciples work this kind of miracle. Only this miracle could be done by Jesus. So when, when I call on you and you have the strength, you ought to step forward regardless of how tired you might be. Or say somebody, well, you know, I'm tired, but we'll do it tomorrow. No, no, care says... Care says, we can't all go down when I'm the strong one in this area. When I'm the strong one in this, none of these men could have worked the miracle. Only Jesus could have done this part. And if Jesus had stayed asleep, this boat would have capsized. But because Jesus knew his part, regardless of how tired he was, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. I don't know if I want to do this no more. Well, what do you want to do? I'm tired. As you keep saying, I'm tired. Okay, all right, so if you're tired, take your nap. No, I'm tired of a nap. Well, okay, go to sleep. Well, no, I'm not. Well, snore. I'm no, I'm not. Well, have a deep dream. Whatever needs to happen, we need you to wake up and be refreshed. Because everyone on the boat is on the same team. Everyone on this boat is on the same team. But on this, on this boat, we got to care. And everybody got to do their part in order, in order for us to survive. Now watch this. Jesus in turn says to them, I want to show you how to do what I do. So he goes on the next verse. Watch this. Says, the verse, next verse. He, says, he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is that you have no faith? Jesus says, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to always have to carry you. So hence, here's what I'm saying to you. The way you come life is just to have faith in God's ability. Notice, notice what happens in, in a partnership, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a one plus a one equal in one, is that even though I may be strong, I know the value of having to bring other people up to a level where, watch this, they won't have to always depend on me. So if you care, you raise people up, you bring them up, you make them better. If you care, if you care, if you care, this is what you do if you care. The second component in any Eros relationship 
is there has to be a friendship component. Friendship component. This is generally built early on in the relationship. Early on. This is before you even think about popcorn. Touch your neighbor. All the grown neighbors tell him, you know what he's talking about. <laughs> I see some of your faces. What, what, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Revelation. Next Wednesday, Revelation going to hit you. <laughs> that every every relational, uh, relational love relationship should have a friendship component. First, first, first. It should have caring first. It should have a relationship, a, a, a friendship component. Now listen to this. Friendships are built over long conversations. Long conversation. I'm talking about, you remember? I know you can't remember, but do you remember? I know you can't remember, but do you remember when the two of you used to fall asleep on the phone? What were you doing? You were building a friendship. I didn't know you, you didn't know me, so we were building a friendship. We were, we were building longevity. We were building longevity. I was coming to know you, okay? So now watch this. The longer you are married, the more you have to work at being friends. Being friends. Now listen to me. There's a friendship component, but you, watch this. This friendship is not like you, your friendship with your, you know, your third cousin. This is that friendship piece that is in a, in a eros relationship, the kind of love, I love you relationship, this level of friendship. Okay? All right. So let's deal with that a little bit here. Okay. So remember this. Love is friendly. Love is friendly. Say that with me. Love is, love is friendly. friendly. All right, go to Proverbs 18 and 19. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 19. All right, I think I want to, uh, do we have this in the Amplified? Is that, is that what, I, what I got there? Yeah, no, no, not that one. I'm sorry. It, it's, you're in the right one, King James. It says, listen to this. All right, now listen, listen very, very carefully that love is friendly. Bear that in mind that love is friendly, okay? All right, so if love is friendly, then I have to care about what I say. Love is friendly, therefore, I care about what comes out of my mouth toward the person I've declared love for. I don't just talk to them any kind of way. And remember now, the more you are in, in love with this person, the more you're in a relationship, this, you have to work on this. You know, because then you, you know, over, you know, after about two years, uh, taking for granted start to step in. Well, you know this is how I am. No, we're going to change that now. You know, every time you, you get mad, you're going to holler off, talk about my mama. We got to change that. No, no, no. We're we going to change that. You, we ain't going to be able to just take, you know, that's how I am. Mm -mm. Friendly. Everybody say friendly. All right? And all this starts up front. You don't wait till you're married to do this. You find out whether or not they're going to be friendly to you. Friendly to you before you say I do. All right? So, in Proverbs 18, 19, notice what it says. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their, con and, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. <clears throat> Death and life are in the power of what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love either death or life shall eat the fruit that they choose. Go to the next verse. Now notice in verse number 22, in verse 21 it said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You've heard that scripture a thousand times. But nobody ever told you that it's connected to verse 22. That the power of life and death where your relationships are concerned is in your tongue. Then he goes on and says, whosoever finds a wife, finds the what? And does what? But you can beat a good thing down with your tongue. Yikes. You can beat a good thing down with your tongue. You know, the, the thing that hurts the worst is your words. That hurts me more than anything in the world is what you say. Well, Pastor, you, you must have forgot that old nursery rhyme then. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. They lied. 
What hurts me most is the way you talk to me. You, you use profanity, and pastor talks about profanity every week at church. He tells you that we're supposed to bless and curse not. He tells you that, that the power of life and death is in the power of your tongue. He tells you not to be sarcastic. He tells you about your profane words, and you still cuss me out just as soon as we get in the car after church on a Sunday morning. <laughs> what hurts me most is how you talk to me. And, and watch this. The, the Bible tells us that the power of life and death and great relationship, a good thing relationship, is in how we talk to each other. Let's, let's see, is, is it verse 23 and 24 there, I think? Is it, it says, the poor uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. Go to the next verse. A man that has friends must show himself what? And there is a friend that what? See? See? If, if, if you want somebody to be friendly to you, you got to show yourself friendly. Kind, caring. Kind, caring. Kind, caring. Kind, caring. Kind, caring. Kind, caring. Pastor, you know, you know I just don't, I just, sometimes I say stuff because I don't just, I don't be feeling good at that time. Well, don't say nothing until you feel good. Send them a text, say, look, I ain't going to talk right now. I don't feel good. They send it back. What you feeling like? I feel like telling you off. Well, don't say nothing. If, you, if, if when you feel bad, you watch this. I use this in counseling. If you feel bad and you start just berating that person that you love, you will tear the fabric of your relationship. And it is hard to sew it together without other people noticing that you've torn it in that spot. I dropped a bomb on you, baby. Some people right now still can't get over the fact that you cuss me out when you cuss me out and the way you cuss me out. You know, there's a way to get cussed out now. Sometimes, you know, people cuss, you know, say, oh, you're, oh, you're all right, you good. But then there's sometimes you know it comes from down in the belly. you like, God, Lee, you could cuss me like that? Me? Me? Friday night paying for our dinner, me? What you say damages the relationship or it builds the relationship up. If you want to be, if you want to be developed as a friend in a relationship, which you have to have, you have to be a friendly person. You have to be a friendly person. I tell people all the time that they say, well, Pastor, how do, how do you and Miss Huntley get along? Because when my wife, if my wife and I was like, let's say we were in the gym and uh, let's, all of us are in the gym and we're in there talking, we're having a good time, and my wife walked in the gym and I saw her, I would immediately change because she is now present. Now, even though before I was hee hee ha 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 with y'all, she came in, now she may want me, so I got to go to, boom, Miss Huntley here. So my words slow down, care starts to step in. When I was talking to you, I wasn't caring about what I was saying. I was talking about you, babe, you were talking about me, we were janking on each other, we were getting down, having a great time. But the moment my wife walked in, I said, oh, excuse me a minute, boom. And that's what happens with most people. Most people don't recognize who they're talking to. That's how you can even curse your parents. Because you don't realize who you're talking to. You don't realize that, that you can talk that way to somebody who gave you life. What you say hurt me. What you said hurt me. And you never walk back from it. This age of Donald Trumpness. It's not something you ought to adopt. This world set this thing up when these reality shows began to come out and these women on TV talking any kind of way, these men on TV talking any kind of way, this, this love and hip hop and housewives of every city and preachers of every town. It set it up the atmosphere of all this Trumpism. That now you can lie, you can say anything. 
I mean, I have never heard him. Now, he, he'd been low, but I have never ever called, heard him call anybody a low life. But he called Omarosa that yesterday. Low life. I, I have never, in all of this time he's ever been in the office, I've never heard him say anything like that. But yesterday, called her a low life. A low life. How in the world do you get there? You get there because people don't watch what they say anymore. They say it and don't, they don't walk back from it. That's what I meant. I meant to say exactly that. And then they watch the news cycle just run with it. How oh, did you know what he said about her? And then, yeah, and that was racist. And it didn't have anything to do with race. It was just that she taped him saying some racial things. <laughs> you didn't get what I just said. Some of y'all are like, this is this a sermon of politics? I shifted a little bit in politics, but we're still in the sermon. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? How do you get there? There's, we have never had a president to do this, say this, like he says. Even Barack Obama has some polish. You didn't hear what I'm saying. And so what I'm saying to you, that's how people can just say anything. People can just cuss. I mean, just cuss anywhere. Forget the children. You don't, men, do you know there used to be a day where men did not use profanity in front of women? Do you know it used to be a day? I ain't talking about today, but there used to be a day. And we built it out and built it out, and now we're hurting each other with our words. We're, we're, we're supposed to be building up. We're supposed to be building up. We're supposed to be encouraging, and we're tearing each other down with the very element that God gave us called our tongue to produce the power of life and not the power of death. Can I get one amen in this house? <clears throat> You got to care about what you say. Seek always to build up. Go to Proverbs 15, 1 through 4. We're going to read this in the Amplified. I'm almost done. <clears throat> All right, watch this. It says, a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise speaks knowledge that is pleasing and acceptable, but the babbling mouth of fools spouts folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good and all their endeavors. A soothing tongue, speaking words that build up and encourage, is a what, y'all? Tree of life. But a, 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 a per, per, perversive tongue, speaking words that overwhelm and, de and depress, crushes the spirit. So what do you say? What do you say? It's important. So when I declare, when I declare my love for Yolanda, now I know I've got to watch what I say. I've got to watch what I say. She had to watch what she says to me because our words are, are, are instruments to build each other up, not to tear each other down. You look like I'm helping you this morning. Number three, and I'm done. Every relational relationship should have a support, a support component first. Will you support me? You got to care. Care component, friendship component. Now, you, I want to know if you're going to support me. Are you going to support me for all the endeavors of life? Now, I'm going to use a, a, uh, a scripture here that's going to have two men in it. And I don't know, I went online, and when I researched this, I was like tripping because people were trying to make Jonathan and David uh, uh, homosexual partners. I don't know where they got that from. That ain't no way in the Bible. I don't know where they got that from. They misread. I don't, I don't know. They're trying to make, make the two of them gay men. And I'm thinking, well, they must have been bisexual then because they've been loving all kind of women, boy. And if there was a dude in there, surely they would have stuck him in the list of them. You didn't hear what I just said. And I said, well, you know, Jonathan, Jonathan's son was named Mephibosheth. We know about him because the Bible said he he was, in, 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 he was under the care of a, of a, a caretaker and, and, and the little maid dropped him because she, the sound of war went out and he was lame upon his feet, meaning crippled upon his feet because he was dropped as a child. And I don't know where people get this from, but it's the environment that is out there that we want to we wanna take agape, we want to take arrows, we want to take the love of God and we want to twist it the way we want to twist it. Does that make sense to you? 
All right, so I wanted to say that before you Google this, and then you start saying, well, Pastor Hunter, he, he must didn't see this. I saw it. I saw it out there. Amen? All right, so let's take a look at it. Now, this is important because support is important, all right? Go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. David and Jonathan had a friendship uh, 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 that went beyond just basic friends. They were like, like brothers from another mother. Does that make sense? Like, like, like uh, uh, Pastor Hill here. You know, you know, I don't have like a whole lot of friends on the list, you know, but Pastor, Pastor Hill, well, he's he my, he, he my best at now. That's my best over there. That's that, that my boy over there. Okay? And I've been knowing that. I've been knowing that since he showed up at church. I tested it one day. He was up in the sound booth. I was down there preaching. And that microphone went to squilling. I called him out in front of everybody. He ain't duck and dodge or nothing. He tried to fix that thing. But he's like, oh, no, let me see if I can get this right. Pastor and called me out in front of everybody. And he ain't walk away from church. He, he never, he called me out. I'm walking away. No, I called him out in church. Then we started playing basketball. And I played him unfair from the beginning. First shot he took, I hit him in the face. I smote him good. Whop out in Jesus' name. But we, we almost like two peas in a pod. Two peas in a pod. I can send, I can send Pastor Hill right now to any church and he, they, would, they would elect him as their pastor. He'll tell you, every time a church comes available, I'll call him in the office and say, Pastor Hill, do, do you, have you heard from God about leaving True Divine and becoming a pastor? I know his assignment is attached to me. I know that if anything was to happen to me, he is, you're going to be your best choice. I know that. He knows that. We talk about it. We keep it alive in front. This is the kind of a relationship that David and Jonathan had. Not none of that stuff that's out there in the world. It was a kind that says, yes, Jonathan, on Jonathan's part, yes, I'm the son of the current king. But because I'm the son of the current king does not mean I'm the next king. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. It means I recognize in you the capacity that perhaps what I don't have and I'm going to set you up so that you can make and become the best leader possible for our country. That's the love that David and Jonathan had for one another. The kind that was knit at the soul. He says that it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Brother from another mother. Not homosexuality. I just, I just, I just, let me get off that. Come on, honey, come on, honey, get your mind right. And Saul took him that day and would not let him go no more home to his father's house. That Saul is, the, is, is Jonathan's dad, he's the king. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. They made a covenant. They made a covenant. They made a covenant. Listen to this. Because he loved him as his own soul. Now watch what happens. They make a covenant because I see in you everything that we need in a king, even though my daddy is the king. Watch this. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him. All the authority he has as the son of the king, he strips it all off. Watch this. He gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow, and all the way down to his girdle. He took all, all of the authority he had as the son of the king, and he passed it on to David, watch this, who was now anointed by the man of God to be the next king. <clears throat> and in your relationship, you're going to have to support one another. You're going to be able to say, you know, you know, my husband is, 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 is up for a promotion and, and, and he doesn't have a resume and I'm great at writing resume. I'm going to have to sit down with him, figure it out, and help him write it up so that he can get the promotion. Instead of sitting around talking about, well, you know, he ain't giving me no money no way, so I don't need me trying to get him no raise. I ain't going to get paid out of it no way. <laughs> he saw it in him. 
Jonathan saw it in him. And that's what I'm saying to you. If you're dating right now, don't engage yourself. Don't marry people that don't have capacity for greatness. And I just believe everybody has capacity for greatness, but some of us ain't walking in it. And don't get engaged with those kind of folks. And if you marry somebody, it's your responsibility to support them, build them up, encourage them, pat them on the back. Sometimes uh, you get ladies say, well, you know, I ain't stroking no ego. You got to. All the ego he got. You gonna have to tell him. He's standing in the mirror, looking at himself. This is the fifth time he looked at himself. Y'all quiet. You are going to have to tell him in order for him to get out the mirror. Boy, you looking bad today. <laughs> and listen, this is the only guy you got to tell it to. Yes, sir, you are going to have to tell her. Girl, you are looking beautiful today. You are looking so beautiful. You will not leave the house until you tell her that. So you are going to have to do some pats on the back. It's okay. You ain't got to pat Pastor Hartley, but the one that you love, you have got to pat them on the back and declare to them that they have a good life and a good future ahead of them. You got to support them. You got to support them. And this is what Jonathan did for David. He supported him. He said, man, you, you got everything it take. You got everything it take. You'll learn later on when the kingdom got in trouble that Jonathan, when he had to choose sides between his daddy and David, he said, I'm going with David. I'm going with David. Daddy told him off for going with David, but I'm going with David. And I'm saying to you, you got you to support that woman. You got to support that man. You got to do it. You know? and no matter what, you got to do it. Pastor, you mean tell me I got to go with everything they do? That ain't what I said. But you know when it's important. You know when, when he talked about much as he loved his mama, and he talked about going to his mama's birthday party. You already know you better get you a dress for that. And he said around the time I do, I do, I got to go. Really? Really? That's not even a question. When we care, and we care enough about the people we declare love for. And when we decide that we're going to be their friend and we're going to stick closer to them than any brother could have ever stick close to them, and then we're going to, then watch this, and we're going to talk to them right and make sure that our words are conditioned in such a way that, that, that we, that they're words that bring life and not death. And then we support them. At the end of the day, we're going to be good. Now watch this. Now we can ask for God to come in and bless our union, bless our relationship, bless our dating. But when we're talking down to each other, we need to get along with God and say, God, help me with my mouth. Don't need me talking to God about my mouth and, you know, about Yolanda's mouth. You know, Lord, she, she, you know what, Lord? This lady has got the foulest mouth I've ever heard in my life. And then I'm more foul than she is. No, this is time to get with God and say, you know what? I've got to change my ways. Be like, hey, guys, consider your ways. And I've got to consider my ways, and I've got to say to myself, you know what? I've declared my love for this person. And because I've declared my love for this person and God loves me, I want God to change my heart, and I want to see them through the lens of God, not through my own lens, not through my own ways, not through my own thoughts. And I've got to care, and I want to support this person. I want to support him. I want to support him. I want to support him. My wife, my wife talks about, well, what am I going to do next? So every now and then I come out, bring her up, say, girl, what you going to do next? You know, I, t I start counting her years and how many years she's worked in school, school system. And we were just talking about this the other day, and I start counting her years. And, you know, you, it's about time to go do something else now. And, and, and she'll say, well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. So then what I do is I start sitting around with options. I start thinking about it for her. Because two check better than one check. <laughs> Some of y'all thought I was going to come up with something supernatural, right? <laughs> so I start thinking for us. I go, okay, what, what about this right here? Hey, what about this right here? Uh -huh. What about this right here? You know, every time I said, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't doing that. I'm always stay with the MPS then. I said, uh, I said, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? 
And I start thinking ahead for her. I just start thinking ahead for her. I just start thinking ahead for her. And what am I doing? Supporting. 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 When the last time you supported a person you declared your love for? When the last time you supported? When the last time you cared? When was, when was the last time you talked to them? You know, the thing I figured out with, with human beings and communication is we know how to say the right thing. We just may not do it. And I'm saying to you, don't wrestle between life and death in your tongue. Choose the life that is in your tongue. And do it every time, regardless to what other people or that person that you love, what they say to you. Just, just choose to do it every time that way. Listen to this. The soft answer turns away the wrath. And if you just bite and devour, you will tear the fabric of your relationship. I'm going to ask our prayer team to come. Miss Dorothy's going to our cafe. She's going to meet first-time visitors today. Share a little bit about True Divine. Our cafe is located out the middle doors and to your left. You're in this room today, and I know I, I've been preaching the song. I know I have. I know that the Word of God has been right there in your face today. Now it's time to respond to what you heard. So everybody stand to your feet. Our prayer team is at the altar. Those that have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, want to make him Lord over your life, gather your things, come on down, we want to pray for you. If you're a backslider, do the same. If you want to join this church, gather your things, your family, come on down, let us pray for you. Pray the vision first, and then we'll send you back to Miss Bobby and her team, and they'll get you all uh, through the, all the paperwork that's necessary to get you all signed up to be a member of the church. But I want to talk specifically to those that are in the room that you know the word of God was for you today. Maybe you've lost that ability and grace to care. Maybe you've just walked away from that. I, Pastor, I'm just tired of this. I, I, don't, I don't know, you know. That second thing you were talking about, that tongue thing, it's just it's really torn the fabric of our relationship. Y'all bless them as they come. <clears throat> it's, it's really done as in. It's really done as in, and, and I don't even know how we're going to recover from this. I just, I just don't know how we're going to recover from this. And I'm saying to you today that God is the recoverer. That's what he sent Jesus for, to recover. He give us the Holy Spirit to help us. And so today I'm praying that you will receive that help today that we're offering you. So maybe you're in the room today and maybe you've given some crushing blows with your tongue and you need to receive some forgiveness. Or maybe you've received some crushing blows with tongues and maybe you need to give some forgiveness. This is a fine opportunity to come. Let us pray for you. So that you can be let off the hook from any emotional attachment to what happened any scars that have been made that they can be totally healed any wounded place can be totally healed that's right bless them all as it come bless them all as it come maybe you're in the room and they've been squilling They've been squilling about support me. Can't you just support me? Can't you just support me? Can't you just support me? And if you heard that and you need help in prayer about being a support to the people that love and you love them, if that's you in the room, come on down. We want to pray for you about having the capacity to support if that's you in the room. Listen, I'm going to pray and give the benediction and if you want to wait till people are gone to come this prayer team will be here at the altar just ease on down here and let them know what you want to be prayed about lift your hands for the blessing the Lord bless and the Lord keep you the Lord give you the ability to care the Lord give you the ability to support the Lord give you the ability to be a friend the Lord give you the ability to speak words that are uplifting I declare this over your life 
I declare peace in your home, peace in your relationship. I declare safety that angels on guard around you and your household as you leave this place. I pray that God's good hand be with you and give you grace and peace as you go. I declare the blessing over your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, won't you give God a big thank you? God bless you all. Have a great Sunday morning.